Hello and welcome to Code with Vinay. In this video, I'll discuss how to compute the square root of a number using recursion in Java. Square roots are an important mathematical concept and are used in many fields of science and engineering. Just to be clear, I'm not talking about computing the square root of the perfect square. This method will work for fractional numbers also. In this video, we'll explore how to use recursion to compute the square root of a fractional number in Java. Recursion is a powerful technique in programming that allows a function to call itself repeatedly until a certain condition is met. If you feel that you need to brush up your knowledge of recursion, then I already have an in-depth video for you. You can find the link to the detailed video in the description below. So let's get started. A number n is said to be square root of x if n multiplied by n is equal to x. Here I would like to emphasize that the square root of a negative number is an imaginary number and for the purpose of this discussion, we'll only be considering the square root of numbers more than or equal to zero. For example, the square root of 25 is 5 as 5 into 5 is 25. Also note that the square root may be non-terminating and non-recurring in some cases like square root of 2. In cases like these, we'll only go for a certain precision in terms of number of decimal places. Like in this case, our precision is of 4 decimal places. The method which we are about to discuss is pretty basic. We'll start with a guess and then we'll improve upon our guess gradually till our guess reaches the square root of the number within reasonable limits. There are other methods which can approach the square root much more quickly, but we'll attempt to solve the problem by staying within the confines of the ISC syllabus. Let us understand this recursive procedure with the help of an example. For this example, we'll see the procedure to find the square root of 30. We'll be needing three variables. I've tried to give descriptive names to the variables. Our first variable is guess, which holds our estimated value starting with zero. Our second variable is square, which holds the square of our guess. And our third variable is the step, the amount by which we'll change our estimated value. The initial value of guess will be zero. The square of zero is zero into zero, zero and zero is not equal to 30. So we need to increase our guess and our first value of step will be one. So our new guess will be zero plus one, one. The square of one is one and one is less than 30. So again, we need to increase our guess. So our new value of guess will be one plus one, two. The square of two is four and four is also less than 30. So Again, we'll add the value of step to guess. So the new value of guess will be three. Three into three is nine. Nine is still less than 30. We'll again increase the guess by one. So the new value is four. Four into four is 16. 16 is still less than 30. So again, we'll increase the guess. New guess is five. Five into five, 25. And 25 is also less than 30. So we again increase the guess and this time the value of guess is six. But six into six is 36 and 36 is more than 30. So this implies that our square root should have been five point something. So what we'll do is we'll go back one step and then we'll divide our step by 10. So the new value of the step will be 0 0.1. So see what is happening. First, we were increasing by one and now we'll increase the guess by 0.1. Similarly, later on, we might divide by 10 again and then we'll increase by 0 0.01. So let's explore this also a bit. And this time I'm not going to waste time in calculating the square and all. We'll straight away see how the guess is supposed to increase. So the guess will be 5.1 then 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5 and so on. Let's say once our guess reaches 5.5, the square of 5.5 is more than 30. So what we'll do, we'll again go back one step and we'll again divide the step by 10 and the new value of a step is 0 0.01. Observe that the value of the step will keep decreasing as we move forward with each recursive step. 
Also note that there will be cases where the square root is recurring or non-terminating or both. In those cases, we'll stop once we have achieved the desired accuracy in terms of the number of decimal places. What it means is that if we do not get the exact answer and the value of the step becomes too small, we will stop and the current value of the guess will be our approximate answer. Also recall that recursive procedure tends to take more memory and for large values, the stack space might be exhausted and this may lead to out of stack space exception. Now let us convert this logic into code. Our first step is to declare the method. So let us do it. We'll say public static float and let's call the method as sqrt. Now our method will take three arguments. x, that is the number of which we want to calculate the square root of the guess and the step. Once this is done, we'll calculate the square of the guess. So we'll say float square is equal to guess into guess. Once that is done, we'll compare this square with the x. So we'll say that if x is equal to square and this implies that we have found our square root. So if x is equal to square, we'll say return guess. Otherwise, we'll check for the next condition. We'll say that if square is more than x, if this is the case, then what we need to do is we'll check whether or not the step is more than our required precision. So we'll say that if a step is more than, and now we need to give the precision. So let's say our precision is 0 0.000001. So if our step is more than the precision, we'll make the recursive call. So let's do it. We'll say return sqrt. The number is not going to change, so we'll pass x. But our value of guess will now be decreased by the step because the step is more than our precision. So we'll say guess minus step. And our step will be divided by 10 each time. So step by 10. So that's one thing. If the step is not more than guess, then we'll simply say guess minus step. So we'll say else return guess minus step. If a square is not more than x, then we'll again make the recursive call. We'll say return sqrt. Obviously the x is not going to change, but this time we'll increase our guess. So we'll say guess plus step. So the next value of guess will be guess plus step and obviously in this case the step is not going to change. So this completes our function definition and again the user is wanting to calculate the square root of a number but here he is forced to provide three arguments. So we'll lessen the burden of the user by overloading this method like we did like we have done in other recursive questions. So we'll say public static float sqrt and within this sqrt we'll take only one argument that is float x and from within this method we'll call our recursive method so we'll say sqrt and then we'll pass our values so our values are x comma first guess is 0 and first step is 1 so this should do our job let's create a test case so we'll say system.out.println and then we'll call our method sqrt and let's say we want to find the square root of 25 first so let's run the program and see what we get so if i run the program we are getting 5.0 which is correct 
Now let us try to find the square root of another number, something which is not a perfect square, say 30. And uh, in order to test this, what we'll do is that we'll also print the square root by math.sqrt. So we'll say system.out.println math.sqrt and uh, 30, but this will return us a double. And to make a job of comparing slightly easier, we'll convert it into float. So let's see what we get and what math.sqrt gives for the value 30. So if I run the program again, there we are, we are getting almost the same value. And if I go over here and increase the precision that is over here, we'll get the exactly the same answer, but this is also good enough for our job. We are able to calculate the square root of a number without using math.sqrt and using recursion. Thank you for watching this video on computing the square root of a number using recursion in Java. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Your feedback is valuable to me. I want to make sure that my videos are clear and helpful. You can follow me on the internet on any one or all of these channels.